Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Now, this is a new week, and I believe in my heart that God has great plans for you. How do I know? I've always told you this, and I mean it. Because he's sending his word to you, praise God. Oh, I'm telling you the truth. As you listen to this broadcast, this is what's surely going to happen. We are creating an atmosphere for the word of God to come to you. Now, I want you to understand something. The word of God to you is not what I am saying. But what I am saying will inspire the word of God to come to you. The word of God is God's spirit communicating to you. Praise God. So that's everything we are doing. Now, why will God send ministers your way? It is not just because they will come and tell you what God is saying, but truly they will create an atmosphere for God to speak to you. Now, even when someone is prophesying to you, hear me and hear this truth. The most potent prophecy is the one that you hear in your heart by yourself. Now, that's why Peter spoke and said, we have a sure word of prophecy. Now, I know many people have referred to that as the Bible. He wasn't talking about the Bible. There was no Bible there. He was referring to the Spirit of God speaking to you as an individual. Praise God. Now, I have, a great, I have great things to share with us this week. And before we go right into the broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Now, we do this on every broadcast, praise God, because God commanded us to do so. Jesus commanded us to do it. And we obey him, releasing our faith, and we've been seeing miracles day by day. Are you ready to call for your daily bread? Join me in faith right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, have you asked for your daily bread today? Oh, yes, you just did. So after asking, what do you do? You receive. Praise God. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive so that your joy will be full. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless God for his word. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about being a witness. Being a witness and, and our text is from Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Now let's go there. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus speaking here. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now, many times we have read this scripture and all we think about is receiving the Holy Ghost and then going to preach everywhere. This scripture is not practically saying go and start preaching everywhere. We, we, we many times misunderstand Jesus and because we do so, we are not effective in the life that we live. I want you to hear me. When Jesus said, you shall be witnesses to me, he was saying, you are going to be the proof of me. Now, the world doesn't see Jesus. You see, I, I sounded something to you last week. I mean I, I mean, I kept saying it. You can't be a witness to someone you don't know. You can be a witness to someone you've not ex experienced. That's why last week I spent time talking to you about the, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I talked about Jesus appearing to you. And I don't just mean him appearing to you physically. I told you last week, if you don't know his voice, if you don't know his word, there is no need for him appearing to you because you will still not know him. I shared with you last week about the disciples after he resurrected from the dead. I told you, and that's the truth. After he rose from the dead, he always appeared in a different form 
when he met, when he appeared to the disciples. And there was a reason for that. Because from the moment he rose from the dead, he is not the same Jesus that they knew, not no more in that glory. I shared with you how in John 17, he asked the father that he wanted that glory that he had with the father from the beginning. And that glory is me, is him being the word of God. Praise God. So wherever he showed up, he showed up as the word of God. He showed up as the word of God. Every manifestation, every appearance, that's the word of God. So if you don't know his voice, then you wouldn't know him. That was what all that appearance was all about. So you remember the disciples on the way to, on their way to Emmaus. Jesus met them and they began to, he began to speak with them. Now he was sharing the scriptures with them. And they didn't, they, you know, they, they felt in their heart that this was Jesus talking with us. But you know how it is. They will look at his face like, no, we know Jesus now. This is, not, this is not the Jesus that we know. Praise God. But who can speak like this? Until when they got to the house and he broke bread. They like, no, it is him. Praise God. And immediately he left. And they said, they, they made a statement, didn't our hearts burn while we were on the way when he was speaking with us? Meaning we could have known. We should have known, praise God, because that's the truth. It is not about his physical appearance anymore. It's about his word, knowing his voice, praise God. So being a witness to Jesus is not about going around telling everybody, oh, Jesus came, he died. That's wonderful, don't get me wrong. That is wonderful. But why or how would you or how should you be talking about someone that you cannot represent. Now, most times when we talk about representing Jesus, most times people just think about, oh, the miracle walking Jesus. But I want you to notice something here. He said, you shall be witnesses to me. You shall be witnesses to me. He didn't say you shall be witnesses to my works. He said, you shall be witnesses to me, to me. So he was referring to his person. He was referring to his personality. He was referring to his, 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 what made him him. Praise God. He said, you will be witnesses to me. So we are witnessing or we are to witness the personality, the character of Jesus Christ. Why? Why is that so important? Why, are we, why am I emphasizing on this aspect? Because you see, we've had many people who witness, who have been witnesses to his works. People who have been witnesses of his, his, his works. So we are because, oh God, fill me with power to do miracles. Now that's, that's wonderful, don't get me wrong. But that doesn't prove that you're a true witness. See that now? It doesn't prove you're a true witness. Now, I know as we go on, you will understand it better. Praise God. Now, notice, he, Jesus said you will be witnesses in different places. From Jerusalem to all Judea to Samaria and to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth. You will be witnesses of me to the ends of the earth. Think about it. Everyone on the earth Every, when he says to the ends of it, he means everywhere. Everyone is going to have a taste of Jesus in you. A taste of Jesus, how? The miracle power of Jesus? Not just that, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Praise God. Now, you know, I, I read the scripture last week to you in, in Acts chapter 1 and verse, Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Peter preaching in the house of Cornelius. And, and he said, how God, that's 38 Acts chapter 10, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. 
Now, I want you to take note of what he said, what, what Peter said here. He said, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And Jesus went about doing good. And he began to heal all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Now you see, Jesus, his concern was to do good. And he was doing good because of the anointing that was on him and the power that was released upon him. So with that power, the Bible says he went about doing good. Now that is a reflection of his character. That's a reflection of his attitude. Take note of this. Jesus went about doing good. Then he was healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Take note of this. Now, so when Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. What was he saying? He is in the same way the Holy Ghost, I was anointed of the Holy Ghost, is the same way you are going to be anointed of the Holy Ghost. Now, what does this tell you? It tells you that the one we are truly witnessing is the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit will testify of Jesus. Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will testify of me. He even said the Holy Spirit will not take of himself. He will not speak of himself. So the Holy Spirit is not going to function in a mind of his own. But he will take of mine and he will reveal to you. Now the same Holy Spirit that was at work in Jesus is the same Holy Spirit that is at work in us. Now if it is the same Holy Spirit, then he will produce the same result. He will produce the same character that he produced in Jesus in us. You see that now? Now that's why I emphasize by telling you that he is not, we are not just witnesses of his works. We are witnesses of him. So Jesus yielded to the Holy Spirit. So every character you see, Jesus manifests. It's, it wasn't just Jesus in, in manifesting it by himself. It was Jesus manifesting those, those characters by him yielding to the Holy Spirit. Oh, you need to understand this. It is that yieldedness. Now, Jesus made a statement in Matthew chapter, um, Matthew chapter 11. Let's quickly go there. Matthew 11. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 29. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. The old King James says, learn of me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. In other words, learn about me. Learn about who I am. Take my yoke and then learn of me. Now, what yoke? Now, listen. He went on to say, for I am gentle. Another word is meek and lowly in heart. Now look at these two attributes. I am meek or I'm gentle and then I'm lowly in heart. Then he says, and you will find rest for your souls. You will find rest for your souls. Take my yoke upon you and then learn of me. Learn who I am. Learn about me. Now, here is the the, the, the point. Now, we have to be witnesses of Jesus. But then he says we should learn of him. Learning of him, he said we should learn his character. We should learn his, his, his attribute. And then he specifically said, I am meek. And I'm lowly in heart. He's giving us the focus. This is who I am. Learn of me. So, 
we are now constrained by what to look out for in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in our lives or through us. Our dominion in, 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 in the way we view things, Jesus said, narrow it down to this, meekness and lowliness of heart. So the way, because see, sometimes people don't understand, people just, you know, the, 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 the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you just think you can do anything. Now, in, in, in essence, I mean, in real living, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you are energized. Now, when you are energized, sometimes people go off board. So Jesus is saying, there is something you need to learn about me. Meekness and lowliness in heart. You need to learn it about me. Now the question arises in your heart, how did Jesus achieve everything with meekness and lowliness of heart? Now you want to think of the world we live in today. I say, man, the world is such a wicked world. If you're not smart, if you're not tough, if you're not this, if you're not that, you cannot survive in this world. But Jesus said, learn of me. This is who I was. And, and I'll tell you this truth about life. There is no difference, I mean, in, in, in terms of quality of human beings. Between now and the days of Jesus, human beings have always been the same. You still find envious people, you still find wicked people, you still find people who will sell you. Praise <laughs> God, it's still the same thing. There is nothing you face today that haven't happened to someone before, nothing. And the same way it's happening in Nigeria, it's happening in China, it's happening in India, it's happening in the USA, it's happening everywhere. You will just find out that human beings are just the same selfish people, self-seeking everywhere you go. We may manifest it in different ways, but it's still the same thing. Now, what does that tell you? The same attributes or the same character with which Jesus won must be the same character with which we will win if we are going to witness him. So he says, learn this about me. And then most powerfully, he did not do it by himself. He did everything he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want you to receive. That's what I want you to hear. That's what I want to sound. He did everything he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Peter said how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing Good. Praise God. Think about it. He went about doing good. That tells you your assignment is to go about not bullying people with the anointing you have received, but go about doing good. Have you received the Holy Spirit in your life? Your assignment is to go about doing good. Oh no, sometimes you have to be tough in life. Go about doing good. It's good. I'm going to expound on this from tomorrow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for every one of you. I pray that through this broadcast, the character, the flow of the Spirit that was in Jesus will flow through you in the same manner. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Spirit of the Lord open your eyes and your understanding. That you will see and know indeed this truth about Jesus. 
and that your life will begin to manifest it in diverse ways. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.